My dear viewer, welcome again today to our series on 40 Days of Prayer. Today we are on day 38, just two more days to go. We are excited that we would, would be able to make a journey of 40 days praying every day. I want to thank you so much for being part of this ministry, part of this program. And I know the Lord has blessed you, he's blessed me, and men are telling me how they've been blessed. So thank you so much uh, this moment. One more time, we are focusing on the three angels' messages. And yesterday we looked at the second angel's message, which, which was calling people um, to come out of Babylon because Babylon has fallen. And today uh, the, we go to the third angel's message that is based on the same book of Revelation chapter 14, verse number uh, 6 down to verse number 11. But specifically, the third angel's message, which begins in verse number 9, and allow me to read. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This is the third angel's message, that the angel, and I said yesterday that these are not literal angels, these are messengers of our days. These are preachers like I am, like you are. The people who are actively involved in heralding the gospel of the soon coming of Christ, calling people from sin into light, into righteousness. These are the agents of the three angels' messages, and in particular today, the third angel's message. Now, before I expound on this, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the precious privilege of this moment. Speak to us now through me, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image. Not here. God has an issue with worship. God is very particular when it comes to the issue worship. Right from the start of the scripture in the book of Revelation, all through, in fact, the struggles God has with the Old Testament church, the Israelites, is based on worship. When God was giving the Ten Commandments to Moses in Mount Sinai, of course to the Israelites in Mount Sinai, when they are on their journey uh, to, 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 from Egypt to Canaan, the first commandment, the opening of the commandment is worship God. That is, thou shalt not have any other God. It's God to be worshipped. And even it goes to the extent of saying, you shall not even bow to those other gods, but worship me, 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 and me alone. God is very generous when it comes to worship. He's very selfish when it comes to worship. He declares in Isaiah, he shall not allow his glory to be given to any other person. He is a, 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 he is a God. And, and he cannot allow any other thing, any other being to take his place. The reason why sin came is because Lucifer, who was created and adored as an angel, privileged than other angels, wanted to take the place of God. You know the story. We are here today because of that. God will never allow anything to take his place. Not even you as a person. Not anything. He won't allow anything to take his place. And let me tell you, the great controversy that we're dealing with is based on worship. It's purely a worship issue. When you come to the book of Revelation chapter 12, chapter 13, and where we are now in chapter 14, and even going through even to chapter 17, it is entirely a discussion based on worship. The beast that we see in chapter 12 and chapter 13 is purely about worship. So the point I'm driving out here is, now in the angel, the third angel's message is very clear that those who 
will worship the beast and his image. As you know, in chapter 13, that's where we see the second beast that comes from the, 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 the land. And you know, we know that story being empowered by the dragon and the effort and the power of the first beast. You know that story. And leading people, people wandering and mavering and following the beast and the Satan. You know, we know all that story in chapter 13. But, but now, we, we, we are saying, because in chapter 13 and 12, the dragon and the beast there make the whole world to worship the beast the dragon, then the here in chapter 14, this message of God comes and says, listen to me, there will be compelling forces, there will be compelling reasons, there will be compelling conditions to push you to move away from true worship to, and to, to false worship. There will be enough compelling, convincing, and convicting reasons for you to move away from true worship because of how the days shall look like. But listen to me. Anyone, anyone who will worship the beast and his image, even after I have declared I am the one to be worshipped, says the Lord. If anyone, not even an angel in heaven, if anyone shall worship the beast and his image, this is going to come to pass. If anyone is going to receive the mark of the beast, this one is going to pass. What? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of indignation. You see, in chapter 13, um, it ends by, you know, the issues of the, the, the receiving of the mark of the beast and the uh, people who are worshipping the beast are being tormented because God has come and he is not happy with that one. You know, right from verse number 14, when you come down, uh, verse 15 especially says he gave him power. Uh, he, he, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as do not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and born to receive mark in their right hand on their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of, of uh, or the name of the beast or the number of his name and, 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 and this is, is it won't be an easy thing people will be compelled by conditions circumstances situation legislations in the parliament you know there'll be enough compelling force but nevertheless this is a test for those who are true in God. There's a test for the faithful ones. This is the patience of the saints, those who believe in Jesus, those who bear the testimony of Jesus. This is the defining moment in your life as a Christian. Who shall you worship? And God is very clear. If anyone is going to heed to the promptings of the evil one and to the threats of the evil one and then go to worship the beast and receive the mark of the beast that they may buy and sell, they may be eat and enjoy this life, he says the same people shall never escape because they are going to receive in full measure a cup not mixed the wrath of God is going to visit with them, not mixed, full of his wrath. This is what is very critical for us today in the third angel's message. It says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with the fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, uh, in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And I love number 12 because it says, Here is the patience of the saints. They hmm, that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Where shall you stand? My dear viewer, let me speak to you briefly before we pray. Where we are headed, you've got to make a choice. And that choice is a matter of life or death. You can't stand between two opinions forever. You've got to make a decision either to stand for Christ and him crucified or to go into the world and sudden. But there can be a middle ground. You have to make a choice to decide to stand on one side. 
But I'm inviting you this morning through the power of the third angel that you may embrace the righteousness of Christ. You may embrace the meekness of Jesus. You may come to him who has died for us. Him who has the keys to even to heads. The one who knows how to fight the evil one. The one who assured us yesterday that Babylon is fallen. The one who will have the final laughter. This is Jesus Christ and is inviting everyone to come. It may be a pleasant experience today, but then Paul says, it's better for me to, to, to endure this momentary trial and tribulations because it's for a moment, because I'm looking to a glorious moment, a glorious experience, that full joy of being ushered into the kingdom of God. I'm inviting you at this moment as you go to prayer that you may purpose in your heart. Never. Never to allow yourself to receive the mark of the beast just for a simple mere privilege of living here to buy or sell. Did you forget that God is able to feed you like if Elijah? Did you forget that God is able to make ways where there seem to be no ways? Did you forget that God has a thousand ways to take care of his people? We do stand faithful. An hour of crisis we are ended when we, you have to make a decision whether to stand for Jesus or to stand for Satan. I have chosen to stand for Jesus and with Jesus. And won't you join with me as we pray that God may fill you, you with his spirit to stand firm in the context of the Than Angel's message and declare in your heart, I will never Receive the mark of the beast. No matter what happens, if I have to die, let me die in the Lord. But I will never receive the beast, the mark of the beast. I will never give consent to any worship that is not true, that is not biblical, that is not based on the scripture. This is where we are today. We are going back to the days of reforms when men and women who stand and say, by scripture and scripture alone, we will be guided by the rule of faith as based in the scriptures. Even though the world will collapse upon us, we shall remain true to this call. Just join with me as we pray. Allow me to give us the prayer items posted the global church as you think through on what you need to present before the Lord this day. Pray for understanding of the third angel's message. Very critical, very important. Pray for strength to obey God's word however he leads. Pray for a heart of mission and ministry. Pray that Jesus will increase your faith in him and for him to shine through you. Pray earnestly for your seven names as well as for your unsaved neighbors who live nearby. This and what you have to present before the Lord, this is our time. Let's pray that as we come to the close of the history of the world, that we will be the part of God's people who are being prepared for the second coming. Join me in this prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the precious privilege of this fellowship. This prayer moment, what a moment to be at your feet and before you. Lord, today we're being challenged by the third angel's message that God vows that anyone who will worship the beast and receive the mark of the beast, the same shall be visited with your wrath, which is undiluted, implying that you will never hold anyone guiltless if he lived in contravision to your will. After you have done all you have done, even slaying your son on the cross mercilessly just for our sins. Today we have an access to the Holy of Holies through Jesus Christ. What shall we then say if we get lost? My Father, we are praying that your grace will be sufficient. We are praying that your spirit will fill us to see you, to desire holiness and godliness, that we shall escape this great wrath that is coming to visit upon those who shall live rebellious of the cross of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying today for my viewer that you shall cause a revival in their hearts, a revival of true godliness, a revival to desire and to discern things of above, that, Lord, they will be prepared for the soon coming. We thank you for the global church and what you are doing for the global church. Lord, from every corner, north and south, east and west, I pray that your power may rest upon your people. Move us with your spirit. Prepare us, Lord. Disturb us. Destabilize us until 
We shall agree to align our appetites, align our will, align our purposes to your will that we will be prepared for the soon coming. I pray for my church in Arabic Central Church. Lord, thank you for this church and bless us, Lord. Bless my members, Lord, wherever they are. They love, they're struggling in sin and some in various aspects of this life. But Lord, we are rebuking the evil one from their presence in Jesus' name. And we're praying that, Lord, everyone who steps into this sanctuary will finally be victorious and find a place in your kingdom. We keep away the evil one in Jesus' name. And we declare today, we will not receive the mark of the beast. We will never worship him. But we shall keep worshiping God, the true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. We are waiting for him to come to take us home. Bless us, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for waiting upon this program and being part of the blessing because I know you're a blessing to many people that you're sharing with. I'm glad to know that every day you're waiting for this program. May the Lord bless you. Just to remind you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please just click that red button there and share with as many as you can because this is a way to reach out to many. Share with them and pray for them. Let's keep praying for one another. Let's purpose to remain faithful until the trumpet sound. Till tomorrow, God be with you.